Hello there and welcome to this video on conversations on consciousness. So in the last video I spoke about light and the importance of sleep with, with light and darkness. So there are many things I didn't cover properly. So there's a whole, there's a, there's a lot to know about sleep and how to get better sleep. Now one thing which I didn't cover on the previous video which was about herbs and proper nutrition. So if you're eating um, very, very light, you need the energy to keep you going throughout the day to burn carbs and to help you sleep much deeper. So having a good diet is important. Now I'm not asking you to change your diet completely. Eat the things that you love, but keep them close to nature as possible. So there might be a few things that are, you know, um, produced, you know, that are man-made or you know, not artificial foods, but, but, but like, you know, pastas and things and probably, you know, some sweets if you, if you like that or, or crisps or treats, but try and keep your main meals close to nature as possible. Keep them from, from veg like beans, broccoli, spinach, kale, beetroot, potato, mashed potato. And this is the thing that I sometimes eat throughout the day, especially in the winter, is I call it magic mash. Um, <laughs> It's like mashed potato, white potato, sweet potato, a little bit of carrot, a little bit of butternut squash, a little bit of butter and, and, and uh, almond milk with a bit of salt and pepper and a bit of uh, cayenne and I just mash it up and that's like a base. And then I might like uh, cook some tofu, a bit of protein, some green lentils, throw in some spinach, some kale, um, some beetroot, um, some beans, that's very important. And my body, I need carbs to, to help me throughout the day. I need energy. I have a fast metabolism. I need the energy to, to, to burn. And we need energy to help us sleep as well. We need carbs in our day. We need sugars, natural sugars, you know, um, to help us to sleep, which is very important. Hydration is also the key as well, that if you are trying to maintain a very healthy life, that we are, as you know, 75% water, 76% water, whatever the percentage, is quite a high percentage. Compared to our body mass, a lot of us is, is hydration, water, liquid, blood. It's the rivers of our body which is flowing. We need that circulation, which is important to keep our body in motion, circulating. So water is very, very important. And yeah, a little bit of tip on an eating and digestion. Make sure you drink before you eat, like dr drink a pint of water, um, drink a pint or I don't know, three or 400 mils, a milliliters of, of water before you, before you eat, not, not directly, but at least before, at least a couple of minutes. And you find that helps to digest because the water will digest faster, it will go through your system faster than the food. So that's what I do. Um, so hydration is the key, making sure that you are hydrated before you sleep as well. And I'm not saying to drink tons and tons to, just before you sleep, have a little bit of a sip, um, have a little bit of a, a little bit of sip of water. But however, have something an hour or so before you sleep, like a lot of water. Not not drink like a liter, but you know a good good pint or something, and then you find that you need to go to the toilet, and then that's when you know you can sleep. So you don't be up throughout the night peeing all the time. You want to keep yourself hydrated when you sleep, because when you sleep, you are can be in a not stuffy room, but you are sometimes in a room depending where you are in the world. If there's not enough airflow, um, especially in the winter time, I'm talking my experience about the winter. That if you are in a room throughout the winter with not a lot of airflow and you're under the covers keeping warm, then you can sometimes wake up in the morning feeling quite um, toxic in a way, like stagnant, congested. You find that around your neck area, you just feel a bit dry and everything. So it's important to keep hydrated throughout the night. If you do wake up in the night, just have a little bit of sip of water just to wet your lips and just to lubricate your, you know, the pipe work that goes in your body, you know, the, the esophagus <laughs> down, to your, down to your stomach. Just keep things lubricated and dry. This helps us for many, many uh, issues within our body, like digestion and keeping us healthy, 
uh, and, and everything, very important. Now, for helping us sleep even deeper, I find that some herbs are very, very beneficial. So there's things such as licorice, um, hops, which is spelled H-O-P-S, um, chamomile, uh, hibiscus, um, valerian is another good one which I use. And sometimes I mix these all into like a little tea and can be quite strong tasting. But for me, I know it's medicine. But actually, the biggest thing that helps me is having some bread before I sleep. Not straight away, but at least half an hour. And for some reason, I find that the only time I eat bread throughout the day is at night time. This helps to relax me. It helps to, yeah, prepare me for sleep. Um, even oats as well can be very good for, for sleeping. And I don't know about the science of this. I've just done lots of research and read things about like um, all these different herbs. So sometimes I usually have like a herbal tea of hops um, chamomile or valerian to help me sleep and relax and like a de-stressor and then after I've drunk that first digestion <clears throat> drink that and then eat which I have some a bit of bread so I can spread on there a bit of bit of vegan butter um, with a bit of marmite which is a, an English brand of like yeast extract it's all vegan it's not the, the most healthiest thing in the world however it helps me to relax and get sleepy and that's what works for me. So if you're struggling to sleep, I find that this food seems to relax me. Now, the worst thing throughout the day, I find, which I've had them before in the past because I needed it, is things like caffeine and taurine. Now, these are the things that you need the very early in the morning to help keep you awake. Um, same thing as like gu uh, guana, I think it is. Gu gu I think it's guana. Uh, like this energy... Uh, energy like, like food which I've tried, like powders I put in coffee, guana, um, taurine, with a little bit of caffeine, which is coffee, tiny, tiny bit, I'm very sensitive. So um, having them throughout the day is, is okay, but do not rely on it. I would say only have it if you're completely tired and you need waking up, that's how I use it. I use food as medicine. Um, same thing as like garlic, uh, I'll cover that in another video garlic uh, and ginger I only use as medicine in, in the winter time. I don't use it as a spice for, for flavor. It's a very, very powerful medicine to help keep you, um, to help keep you well. It gets rid of toxins and, and everything. So um, I try not to have anything that has garlic in it, um, but that doesn't help me sleep, obviously. That'll be covered in, in another video. So yeah, Eating a little bit before you sleep can help. A little bit of digestion, keep you satisfied, because the worst thing is going to bed when you're feeling completely hungry. So it's setting out your routine throughout the day when you're having the proper meals, breakfast, lunch, dinner, supper, or whatever you have. Sometimes I have four or five little meals. And the smaller meals are best, not having such a big meal. So if you can have like regular meals, like every few hours, but small, then you're not getting too like bloated or or a heavy stomach and you're digesting much faster and it feels more comfortable so i'm not asking you to go and cook every time but it can be like having a breakfast which can be like a banana smoothie or oats or it can be some cereal or a bit like an english breakfast um, and then for for like a snack in between you can have a bit of fruit and then you can have like maybe lunch which can be like a heavier a little bit heavier and then uh, a little bit of snack again, maybe have some nuts, a handful of nuts. Um, and then dinner time can be something a bit more heavier, example. So, but not having it too heavy, um, for example, because another thing to know about food and sleep is that when you go to bed with a full stomach, that your body starts to go into rest mode. And so all that food that you've eaten, healthy, doesn't matter what it is, it'll turn it into fat straight away. So you need to make sure that whatever you're eating before you sleep is digested. So the bread isn't so bad for me personally. It's not very fattening. Um, it just creates a bit of mass. Um, and I, I don't have normal wheat or white bread is terrible for me because I get very bloated, very gassy. It's not very comfortable. Um, so I have things like rye and spelt bread mixed together with a little bit of wheat. I find that much more better for my stomach. And a good tip, if you don't know what bread to get, the harder, denser bread, 
is actually better for you, better for digestion. The more fluffier, whiter bread, so much more air in it, is like dough. You can almost put it, you can almost um, put it in your hand, squash it, and it'll keep to like a little, go back to dough basically. That's not very good. You can imagine that being your stomach getting blocked, and for me, it doesn't work very well. After years of being vegan and being fruitarian and going through liquidarian and going through lots of fasting, my body has adapted, my body has now changed in a way that I'm now finding certain foods just don't agree with me that they used to many years ago. So I just find that I get very blocked with eating white bread. I will not touch it anymore. I know my limits. Um, flying is the worst because sometimes you get quite hungry. Well, I get quite hungry when flying to different countries. And anything to eat, being a vegan on there isn't, they have a little bit of fruit, but all they have is just usually white rolls with like, that's it. So I end up eating that only with a bit of like um, jam. And it's, it's terrible. So I've learned my lesson after a few times flying and not to do that anymore um, because I know not to touch white bread. And yeah, going back to sleep with that, like if you're very gassy and like constipated, with the things that you eat, then um, it can keep you awake and keep you feeling very uncomfortable. And yeah, digestion and indigestion is a very you know uncomfortable thing in your body. So the most important thing to to be when sleeping is being very comfortable. There are other tools out there, such as weighted blankets, which are much heavier blankets which you can put over yourself, which gives a sense of security and, and comfort when sleeping. So um, when I was traveling, when I was in uh, Bali and in Indonesia, for two months, I had to learn to sleep with just a, a thin piece of material over me. It took me about a week to get used to because it was so warm, and then I got used to it. But being in Europe and more colder climates, such as when I was in Norway, um, when I was um, yeah, in England, um, I found that like, you know, you needed to keep warm under the blankets, you know, in the night to keep your body heat and to sleep at a certain temperature. So uh, weighted blankets are, are, are a great option. Uh, also grounding mats, grounding sheets, which help, which plug directly into the earth itself. You get the natural biorhythms of the earth, like grounding the pulse going through your body. So I've got this, it's like a, it's a, it's, a, it's a fine silver woven mesh within like a blanket, which helps to surround your body and, and to relax it. Now, earthing is very powerful. It's very important to do with the meridians on our body, especially the reflexology points, the K1 point, the kidney one point on the feet helps to anchor, anchor us down, helps keep our biorhythms uh, balanced. This is why barefoot walking is known to be very good. You don't have to do it all the time, but especially for traveling, um, coming back and just landing properly, just having your feet on the ground can just keep your energetic structure, your energy body, just here a bit more and relaxed. And for night, it can keep you going for a deeper sleep. So there are many tools out there for sleep, sound, light, um, sleeping herbs. But again, the most important thing I have to stress about is stress that if you go to bed and you something is on your mind, then you're most likely not gonna fall asleep very well. You're gonna be having things in your mind and not completely relaxed at all. Um, so stress is one of the biggest factors that only you can be in control of your own stress and not being completely satisfied. However, you can change that with, with own train your own training or relaxing your thoughts and being relaxed so it just takes some time to, to get used to so there are many many more things about sleep which i can cover however for now um, relax and just try and get a good night's sleep um, download something online which has good binaural beats but most important thing is digestion as well make sure you keep it hydrated having good um, good food and not Keep away from the caffeine after you know six hours before you sleep at least, and I'm sure that you'll get a better night's sleep. Uh, sleeping position, where you live, uh, uh, lots of things can impact. So I'll cover that on another video. If not, check out a previous video on light and sleep or light sleep. <laughs> and I uh, hope you enjoy this video so far. 
Um, great to speak in review, and I'll speak to you next time. Goodbye.